Welcome to the Albert and Billy Show. Everyone, how you doing, Papa? Well, I'm primed and cocked. Primed and cocked. I feel like you're missing a microphone for the... You're going to have to talk. Into the mic. That's for me. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat it. I'm primed and cocked. <laughs> All right. Hope everybody's having a good uh, weekend so far. As you're watching us here on Channel 18 Valley TV and listen to us on WUAT AM 1110. And you can watch every episode of the Albert and Billy Show on YouTube as well, Papa. I watch it every day. Oh, yeah, I know you do. Yeah. I don't know what he, YouTube is. <laughs> we have to tell him all the time what it even is. He will not attempt to use a computer. Will not attempt it, will you? No. That's sad. That's sad. Just, that's just sad. I will You're missing out on so much. I will never fly on a plane, and I, I guess know, I'll never be sure. I know. Because <laughs> he's afraid it might be the pilot's time to go. <laughs> that's wise, Billy. That's wise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a few announcements uh, that we've got here, Papa. We'll start out well. The big 127 yard sale's coming up. What day? Oh, uh, that's one. Well, this is saying that there's going to be spots open uh, August 7th through the 9th, so I'm assuming that's the yard sale. Uh, uh, this is at the Lust Community Center. They've got some spots inside for $20 a day and also outside $10 per day. You can bring your own table. For more info, call Wendy at 423 435 1729. That's 423-435-1729. And all proceeds from rental benefits, the Lust Community Center. And what's the county Democrats? Uh, the Democrat Party is meeting on August the 4th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be under the Farmer's Market Pavilion. Uh, they are holding, they're actually going to hold a caucus, Papa, to elect candidates for county offices. Hmm. A caucus. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never attended a caucus before. Uh, I haven't. I've heard of them. Obviously, the Iowa caucus is probably the most famous one. We don't have caucuses here, though. This is something new. Well, it's just where you get together and gab. I reckon. You reckon? I've I've literally never been to one. I don't know how it works. I don't I'm, you, you vote at some point, obviously. Well, you could have a caucus about anything you want to have one about. Okay, well, this is going to be politics. Right. It's an actual caucus, since this is for the Democrats. Any Democrat wishing to run for a county office, obviously you need to attend this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check out the caucuses out. Like I said, that's definitely something new here to Bledsoe County politics, for sure. We have primaries and well, instead of caucuses, so this will be something different. I've got to delve into that to see what a caucus is. Yeah, I know. I figured you'd know a little bit more than what you do about it. One thing that impressed <laughs> me about those announcements you just made. Yeah. You just mentioned the Lusk Community Center there as having spaces available to rent. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the financial impact up and down this valley for people with yard space to rent? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think, I mean, $20 a day inside that building, <laughs> yeah. $10 a day furnish your own air conditioner outside. I'd pay $20. You'd pay, you'd pay $20. <laughs> but but I would say that generates a lot of cash flow in this uh, up and down, well, 127, one end to the other. Oh, yeah, the 127 sale is definitely a big deal. Uh, I'm glad they're having it. I figured it'd be another, just another thing canceled, so I'm glad they're actually having it. Okay, I have an announcement to make. All right, let's hear it. First Southern Baptist Church is going to have a blood drive. Well, really, not First Southern Baptist. Blood Assurance is having a drive <laughs> to collect blood. It's going to be held at First Southern Baptist right. Church. That will be on Monday, August the 10th, which will be a week from this coming Monday. The hours will be 2 in the afternoon until 6 that evening. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to schedule an appointment, 
you go to bloodassurance.org slash FSBC. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or it's, you can call them. But it's not hard to find. Uh, First Southern Baptist Church is on the main street driving up down Pikeville. Yeah, it's uh, kind of hard to miss. The telephone number there at the church is 447-2849. And uh, they want you to eat a good meal prior to your arrival. Mm -hmm. They want you to drink additional water. They want you to avoid energy drinks and to bring a photo ID. That's weird. I never heard of that. But then, I either. Let, let me tell you, things change as you go through life. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you're going to get a Team Blood Donor Beach Towel, and uh, all the donors will oh, be entered sweet. into a drawing for a chance to win the Big Green Egg and egg accessories, whatever that <laughs> what is. What in the world? <laughs> I, w I would be interested in winning that to see what that is. The Big Green Egg. Well, I hope you win it, Papa. The accessories in fascinates we'll see. me. <laughs> we'll see what all that means. And the photo, yeah, I, knew, I didn't know you had to have a photo ID to get blood. But. I didn't either. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. That's a new one. Well, Papa, have you got some trivia for me today? I just happened to have a, a few I questions. But this is would. not necessarily for you, Billy. I want oh, the people okay. that are listening or watching mm -hmm. to... Whet their, their, their appetite and, <laughs> and get to thinking. So the first trivia question I have, a fibber is a... Liar. A liar. Okay. That's easy enough. I like that But one. we have the false idea that if you tell a white lie, it's not as bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's have true. you ever heard that? Yeah, me too. It's just times. a little white line. Just or you can, say, you can say, I told a fib instead of a lie. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do it, maybe not to hurt people's feelings, though. Well, either, <laughs> any way you cut it, you knew what a fibber was. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the Grand Canyon State. Arizona. You've been there? I've not been to the Grand Canyon, though. I'd like to go to the Grand Canyon. My pastor says that that's the grandest. Been, no, no, no. Oh, I thought y'all. We, we went as far west as Colorado, but mm -hmm. we didn't get into the. But my pastor says that the Grand Canyon is the grandest canyon he ever saw. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> a, a vegetable that is a green pod and it's delicious fried. It's also used. Uh, some people pickle it and some people boil it. Carolyn loved it boiled. Boy. Green pod vegetable. It's delicious. Squash? No. <laughs> green, green pod. Well, you can get green squash. Zucchini is green. Oh, okay. But crookneck okra. is you. Okra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I said, didn't I say pod? I said yeah, a green said, pod. Yeah. All right. Boy, I love fried okra. You do, don't I you? I love fried oak. It is good. I like it, too. But now, Carolyn would eat it boiled. And whenever she'd boiled. put one, she'd put a whole one in her mouth, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> pickled okra is good. I, I, I don't that. like pickled okra. I don't like pickled really? Okra. No. I like okay. Good. The dark part of twilight. The dark part of twilight. Is when? You're going to explain that question a little bit better. Twilight. When is twilight? Uh, when is twilight? Just so we're not talking about the movies, are we? No, 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 uh, no. We're talking about twilight. nighttime and daytime. Twilight. Twilight is twilight like sundown. It's right, right before daylight. What do you oh, call it's it? right before daylight. What do you call it? Sunset. Dawn, Sunrise. Dawn. 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 Okay. The average size for a man's shirt. I wear a large. <sighs> average size. Probably medium. I'd say medium. Yeah. But you know so, what? Uh, as men get as as time goes on, men get larger. <laughs> I guess I guess large is probably the average size now. <laughs> Eddie Howard would wear a AAA. When he yeah. when he when he weighed two hundred and sixty pounds. Right. <laughs> okay. The average size, no, let's see, this one. A popular cookie, probably the most popular cookie on the market. It's a uh, brown and with white icing. 
little round cookie got white ice in it oh uh it's round round uh oreo got oreo cookie okay okay the 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 rival for an oreo is made by sunshine biscuit company and it's mm. called a hydrox oh i've never heard of that same size but uh, nabisco says theirs is better and so they charge more for theirs what the oreos more expensive yeah yeah well, but yeah, now sunshine sunshine biscuit company makes crispy crackers <laughs> and they also make the hydrox cookie Hydrox. Hydrox. So it's just like an Oreo. Basically. It's just, if you find a package of Hydrox cookies and they're 50 cents cheaper than the Oreo, you buy the Hydrox. I guarantee you they'll be just as good. Okay. Now, Nabisco people, you forgive me. <laughs> Brenda Blank or Bruce Blank, their last name. One's a uh, singer and one's a kung fu artist. Oh, uh, Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Brenda, Brenda Lee. Lee. Yeah, Brenda Lee, country singer. If yeah. you are speaking Spanish and you uh, <laughs> say La Vista, what or did you put in front of La Vista? You've got to be kidding me. Uh, you didn't take Spanish. Well, I mean, it's definitely been a minute, and I didn't like it too much. Uh, well, I took it for two years. La, say it. What's La, La Vista, Vista? But you say the word before La Vista. You say to someone, I'll see you tomorrow. That's what it means. I'll see, I'll you. see you tomorrow. Or I'll see you later. Uh, <laughs> la Vista. But there's uh, a word you put in. Uh, viva la Vista. Asta. <laughs> viva. Asta, long live. Asta, long live. Hasta la Vista. Hasta la Vista. Okay. Asta la Vista. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. The bull ring yell that you hear people yell when there's a bullfight going on. And the matador is winning over the bull, naturally. Mm. They'll say it's a three-letter word. Uh, run. Boy, I'm, in, I'm in this. I'm into this run. thing. I'm into this Spanish stuff today. But I reckon so. Ole, ole. Okay. I don't know okay. what that means. I guess I kill that bull. Kill that bull. <laughs> I don't know. The bull don't, don't have a chance. <laughs> have you ever heard that it's red that the bull's after? Mm-hmm. They, that and that cape of that matador, he keeps on turning that red cape, you know, and let the bull gets to follow it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the matador sticks that sword in him. Mm. Okay, in the story of the Blanks and the Hatfields, who was the Hatfields foe in that age? The McCoys. Old? The McCoys. And McCoys. I got yeah. a I got a book. Eddie Eric gave me a book last Christmas. Mm -hmm. The Hatfields and McCoys feud. Really? Yeah, you know what is over? No, you know I really don't. I've never really. Uh, it's over a hog. You gotta be kidding! It's no, it's <laughs> over a hog. Wow! I don't know how many people <laughs> lost their life. For real, over a hog? Yeah. Like, come on. That's all okay. my trivia. That's all my <laughs> trivia. Now we're ready for sports. Yeah, I just can't believe a hog caused all that uh, commotion and fighting <laughs> and. Maybe the world's most famous feud. That, that's funny. Well, now uh, you'd think it'd be something a lot. I went to school with Tom. That. I went to school with Tommy Swafford, and Tommy wrote four books mm -hmm. about the uh, Swafford and uh, Tollett feud. Oh yeah, that's right. That's and he right. wrote four books, and and boy, you can talk to most anybody anywhere, anytime. And yeah. somebody's read one of those books, mm -hmm. or maybe all four. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, Whiskey Wars was one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there was a time in this county when whiskey flowed quite freely, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they had to buy their sugar somewhere. I wonder where they <laughs> bought their sugar. We had so many rolling stores working these mountain uh, uh, oh. alleys and mountain roads. Uh, store, been stores, hard to do then. stores bought 100-pound bags of sugar. Uh, people did a lot of canning. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of canning. Okay, okay sure sports. That's all they did. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> sports of all sorts. Baseball. Yeah, sports is finally making its way back. Well, the finally. At Atlanta Braves had their season opener a week ago today. Yeah. And uh, they they won one to zip. Currently, they are on a four and three streak. 
There are four okay. wins and three losses. My Dodgers, mm -hmm. meanwhile, are they have the four wins and they have two losses. Both of them are in second place. So okay. we've got a long we've got a long ways to go. Right. But Just not started. we've already lost hundred and two games. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of hundred and sixty two games, we've got sixty. Mm -hmm. Big difference. I was watching uh, some basketball yesterday, but I am glad they're back. That that does mean a lot. But I do have to say it's really strange uh, watching sports with no crowd. Well, it's really weird. Did, did you tell really me weird. that they have piped in noise? I think they have. Yeah. Someone told me that, that, they, that there's they, noise piped in. There will. Yeah, I guess there was. Yeah, because it wasn't like real quiet or anything like that. But it's just. It's just kind of weird to see. Um, that was the first time I had watched it. Well, like that. the the sports scene totally is has been mm. drastically changed. We'll go on, We'll pick up on that. Basketball. <laughs> the Lady Vols. Mm -hmm. Their coach Kelly Harper. Yeah. Picked up a transfer. Did she from Western Michigan? A guard. Her name is Jordan Walker. Okay. And Kelly was excited to have her join our team because really? she thinks she can use her. She's averaging about 12 points a game okay. uh, playing for her, for the team she played for. But she has a lot of experience to bring to our program that okay. she won't have to really learn a whole lot. Uh, she, has, she has two more years of eligibility left to play. That's good. So that was encouraging, too. Place she played. She played, I guess, for Western Michigan. West, and she was a guard. Hmm. Football. Oh. Now, <laughs> here you get into the uncertain area. Oh We man, know there's know. two of the Power Five conferences that have already said they're playing no non-conference foes. I don't agree with that. That's at all. the Big Ten and the ACC. Was no pack. Pack. Oh. ACC in the pack, no Big Ten in the Pac-12. Yeah, that's it. That's Those it. are the two conferences that have said they'll play no non-conference games. Yeah. Well, guess oh. what? Gee, uh, the SEC, the SEC today, I read, they have decided on a ten-game slate there would be no non-conference oh, games. Man. So the ten players, the ten teams on their Schedule will all be SEC teams. That's that's brutal. Well, that that's, really is. Each one's going to knock the other one off. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? You need forty. You need you need is... occupants for forty-two positions to handle the bowl picture here coming up in December. Yeah, that's going to change that. A eighty-four, lot. eighty-four teams. You're not going to have 84 teams with a winning record. No, not if it's played like that. There's no Because way. if you're going to play conference foes only and you don't have those gimmies, exactly. you don't have UTC on your schedule, uh, <laughs> you don't have Charlotte on your schedule and right. some of these uh, weak ones, then that's going to necessitate headbanging. It's, uh, and whenever you play each other, guess what? 50% of the time you're going to win and 50% of the time you're going to lose. Uh, yeah. So I, it does not look good. I don't understand. I don't get it. Uh, what's the big deal about non-conference games? So what? Just play them. Well, Just play them. I, I don't get that. You're having the season anyway. Uh, playing a non-conference game is, is not going to make that much of a difference, so why not just play them? Well, I don't know where the issue lies with those that make these decisions. In the 14-member oh, yeah. SEC, only one school voted not to do that, and that was South Carolina. They wanted to play Clemson. Yeah, I'm they sure. wanted the in-school rivalry. Well, that's a huge game for them. Okay, every but year. here's the here's the overall picture that I look at. Wait, you mean to tell me that all the other schools are actually for this? They want for to just thir play the conference. Thirteen and one was the vote. Thirteen schools voted to do this, and one South Carolina voted not to do this. I cannot believe that. But here's wow. the, here's what disturbs me. Those non-conference games, yes, they padded your one-loss record. They helped but tremendously. They depended on that payday 
for coming to your school to pay well, play the, you. Yeah, the small. They got school, big bucks. That's why the small school schedules. Well, those they're games. not going to have that. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. So it's going to hurt the overall scheme of things. Of course, and it, it just seems unnecessary. It just it really does. Just play you non-conference games like you always do. Well, here's the thing about it. Uh, I guess someone, some seer looked down from above and said, here's what we've got to do, boys. The cash cow that makes everything run and run mm -hmm. smoothly in sports, in, 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 in the college, is football. We've yeah, got to have yeah. football. Well, so in some it's shape, form, or fashion, crazy. that's what they're going to do. ESPN well, is to. a 12-year contract. And they're furnishing $5.6 billion into the football economy of every institution that plays football. Yeah. That's You don't have to have fans in the stands. You don't have to have fans coming through the gates. What hurts well, me, those, those people that worked for yeah. the universities, manned the concession stands, mm -hmm. took care of the parking and all these smaller things, sold the beer, all these things. They don't have a job. Yeah, that's. I don't agree with it. I just don't agree with that. But, but I, I guess it's better than not having them at all. Come you know? December, come December, mm -hmm. you're going to see a bunch of schools with that five-five record or four-six record, yeah. saying to those bowl committees, "Pick me." Mm -hmm. The four games that I won, I won over big time opposition. I know. You know, I know. It's going to be interesting. That that is that. that I can't believe that only one school uh, voted against that though. That's crazy. South Carolina, and it was their president. He was their representative. Right. Not the athletic director. The wow. president of South Carolina. Okay. Anyway, I can't believe that. That's football, golf. What's happening in golf, Papa? They had a tournament last weekend, the 3M. 3 uh, It was held in Blaine, Minnesota. Okay. And Michael Thompson finished two shots better than Adam Long. This was a weak field. There oh. were not a bunch of uh, biggies oh, around. Players. No. Okay. Uh, uh, this was only Michael's second win. He, the mm. last time he won was seven years ago. I oh. mean, his wife was praying. But he, <laughs> but he won $1,188,000 to win that wow. tournament. One this, tournament. This is ridiculous. But you, <laughs> your golf stars, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Tommy... Uh, Fleetwood, Paul Casey, they all went by the boards early. They got they didn't have the a good enough score to stay around for the weekend. Really? So it was a really weak field for television viewers oh. on the tail end on Saturday and Sunday. They were not there. The big the big draws were not there. there. Yeah, you've got to have a golf star. Oh, you've mm. got to have a. Uh, how did you describe it? You got to have what kind of a player did you did you say that uh, go to player? Uh, you talked about uh, basketball Tennessee uh, mm -hmm. franchise. Yeah, you got to yeah, have a franchise yeah. player to generate seats. And but heck, we don't have to worry about seats uh, anymore. I guess, yeah, I guess that's why they don't care right now. <laughs> but sometimes that little. I think the fans will come back maybe mid season. I think. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that's right. Uh, well, a lot more. I'm sure a lot of it's going to depend on the yeah, uh, and and the school attendance is going to depend on the severity of the number of cases involved as to what it will dictate mm -hmm. whether they do or don't. Right, that's true. But anyway, in golf, I've been trying to get you to take up golf because one million one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to get that little bitty white ball into that little bitty hole. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes that hard. ball is much larger than the little bitty hole or the little bitty. No, you're right. I don't know. <laughs> Basketball, the NBA, <laughs> the NBA. After missing since March the 11th. Oh wow! They started play last night. Oh, I'm, I was really glad about that for sure. They started play last night, and here again, you've got your franchise players. That's what draws the spectators into the. 
mm -hmm. venue where they play, but heck, they're, also gets they're not there. Also get them to watch on TV, too. Well, that's it. That's well, so it. All but people are right ready now. to watch a contest. They're tired of watching yeah. classic football and classic uh, yeah, basketball. Yeah, I'm tired of watching uh, stuff from years ago. Yeah, but, but I found my... it's about kill me with no sports. I've been going crazy. But I but I have been watching some of the games. I have too. <laughs> I have too. I mean, <laughs> I'm in bad shape. <laughs> Football. The ACC announced this week they're going to have an 11 game schedule. Oh. They hmm. and they are including and Notre Dame has n has not been a conference opponent. Uh uh. They've been independent. Well, Notre Dame and football's independent. Yeah. 133 years, but so. they're going to allow themselves to be a conference member of the ACC this year, so that. Teams can have 11 teams to play. Well, that's good. And really, I mean, Notre Dame is independent in football, but in all other sports, they are in, they're in the ACC already. They're in the ACC in other sports. So I, didn't, I think it's time for them to move the ACC in football and I, quit being independent. Cause I, I've often wondered why. I can't figure that out. Well, the what I figured, Notre Dame all all well most always. I, I figure they figure God's on their side. <laughs> uh, they always figure if we are not in a conference, we don't have to share our winnings with anyone. True. We get to keep every penny we win. So it's about money, of course. Well, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's it's what it's about. Some, something. Georgia Tech used to be in the SEC. I don't know. It's, I mean, you've told me that's how I know. Tulane used to be in the SEC. Really? Yeah. Tulane? A long time ago. Of course, I'm over 100 years old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, this, this deal with SEC having the 10-game slate, mm, playing members like only, it. that means that the September 5th game – between Tennessee and Oklahoma is gone by the boards. I know what. Gone by the boards. The, I just don't like this non-conference issue. I, I don't like it. Well. But I mean, I mean, I'll take it because it's better than nothing. You know what I mean? But cooler, still. wiser heads have gotten together and made these decisions, Billy. I'm gonna mm. leave it alone. I bet you they wouldn't listen to me anyway. If I, I don't were to know call, how much cooler and wiser they are, to be honest with if you. If I were to call, okay. If I were to call the uh, <laughs> Phil Fulmer at, at Tennessee and tell him I, I want to voice my opinion about this matter, he'd say, "Well, Albert, let me get a pen and paper. I'll write down everything you say." <laughs> no, he'd say, uh, oh, "Call my secretary and and she'll relay the message to me." <laughs> that's, that's, I had that's a chance. The fellow that used to take us to the ball game every year at, at, at Knoxville, uh -huh. uh, he knew Johnny Vaught at uh, Ole Miss or Mississippi, Ole Miss, I believe. Uh -huh. And Johnny Vaught, uh, he was big, big time coach. And one day the bus was unloading as we were walking toward the game. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Loomis knew Johnny Vaught real well and spoke uh -huh. to him, wanted to know if I wanted to go over the fence and meet him. Wow. He, uh -huh. he really did. But I didn't. And you didn't do it? No, I didn't. I didn't know Johnny Vaught from Adam. That would have been cool, though. But it had been, been an opportunity to meet a big-time coach. Uh, exactly. Can't Mi believe you. Mr. Pop -Pop. Loomis would take us to one game every year. And we we couldn't always pick out the game. It, it depended on who. Uh, they took one of their customers to a game every Saturday. Oh, and we got to see the Army Mute one year, and uh, <laughs> we would we would always enjoy the games we went to. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Loomis, we were it was exciting. They brought in a certain quarterback, and I said, "Oh boy, now we're going to have an opportunity here because <laughs> the fans went crazy when they brought this quarterback in." Mm -hmm. And I said, "What about this buck?" And he said, huh, "I'm not paying any attention to the quarterback. I'm watching the line play." He said the the game will be will be dictated win or mm -hmm. lose by whichever line can move the other line. 
That's so true. That's, and, that's true in every game. But his yeah. wife, his wife told me he's he's dead now, and his wife's dead too. But he told his wife told me that whenever they got back home from the ball game at Knoxville, he would he had two TVs in his room, yeah. and he would be watching two more games at the same, <laughs> at the same time. Oh, they would God. always take oh, us out I for bet. dinner, <laughs> and then they'd take us out for supper after the ball game. Well, dang, you keep, one year you they took us. That. One year they took us up into Gatlinburg from Knoxville. Yeah, to eat supper. Hey, hey can't beat that, Papa. Good friend, good friend. Apparently so. Sounds his, like my kind of people. <laughs> his wife was a piano teacher and an art teacher, and she owned department stores in three different towns. Whoa, whoa. Very fine lady. That, very yeah. Fine lady. All right. Well, is that any more that's, sports? That's my sports. Hey, you did I have good. nothing else. You've done great just coming up with with what you've come up with. There's the not a whole last couple of months. I've I mean, been watching been axe throwing and marbles here lately. <laughs> there he goes with the marbles again, folks. Marbles is not a sport, but I can't get that through his head. It, it's what you make it, Billy. <laughs> I, they have, I consider marbles a game. They have tournaments. Well, tournaments, big time tournaments, that, here in just, Tennessee. They have marbles tournaments in Tennessee. That's, yes, they do. That's weird. I don't. Get you it. don't believe me? I didn't say one I don't of one of the you. state parks. One of the state parks over toward Nashville. Mm hmm. Stone something. Uh huh. Got stone in it. They have the they marbles have, tournament. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Well, we may just have to go check it out one. I can't pop play pop. marbles anymore. I can't get down on my knees. <laughs> well, that's it for uh, sports of all sorts. Coming up after the break, it is Papa's favorite time of the show. Good old Albertology. Stick around. That's coming up after the break right here on the Albert and Billy Show. Take care of last day deal. Oh, no, I'm going to lost my debit card. Hey, use that new Mountain Valley Bank app we got. You know, Card Valet. You can freeze your card so nobody can use it till you find it. That's a good idea, Dylan. What was the last place I used my debit card? I don't know. Hurry up. I can't stay as late for error. I feel like I'm doing the Lannigan Challenge. I'm gonna end up with lockjaw. <coughs> Thank God. The out freezes my debit card, Bill, and not you. Oh. Dana Thompson and her family just finished construction on their second new home with River Valley Ag Credit. Side by side, we ensured they got a quality, lasting home. You see, Dana and Brady have two daughters who rely on them. And we rely on River Valley Ag Credit. Rely on River Valley Ag Credit. Serving Western Kentucky and Tennessee farmers for decades. Lending support for generations, River Valley Ag Credit. Ben Buckner here, General Manager of Vitri Pre-Owned of Dunlap. I'm here to let everyone know that Vitri offers a full service garage open to the public. Our mechanics are ASC certified and locally known and have over 20 years of experience. From our $29.95 oil change to complete car care, no job is too big or too small. Come in and check us out, 15480 Rankin Avenue, right in the middle of Dunlap, Tennessee. 
Welcome back to the Albert and Billy Show here on WUAT Radio and Channel 18 Valley mm. TV and YouTube, right, Papa? I love that <laughs> YouTube. Well, they got sponsored Citizens Tri County Bank, Bilbury Insurance on Spring Street. We'll see Frank, Susan, and Sadie. <laughs> Can't miss Sadie, can we? No. For all your insurance needs, Scotty's right here in downtown Pottville, home of the Scotty Burger. The Loom, our next door neighbor here on Cumberland Avenue. Farm Bureau Insurance in South Pottville. Go see Matt Massengill and his friendly staff for all your insurance needs are right next to Putnam Reed Funeral Home. Uh, the offices of Emma Boynton, Michael Walker, and Lisa Wheeler. Uh, we also thank Mag's Auto Sales and Morgan Brothers, who they're back open. Uh, we're waiting on Morgan's on Main to open back up. I've been hearing the last couple of weeks that they're opening back up. Uh, but we but just don't yet. know when. Just don't know when. So as soon as we find out, we'll be sure to let you folks know on that. Because <laughs> we don't know for sure on no. that yet. But the original, the Morgan Brothers uh, is open, though. Uh, the other one is. The no. first one, it's open. The Above town. Open. Yeah. Where the Rock House Cafe used to be. Yeah. They're open. And it's time now for Albertology. And uh, we just got handed this. Uh, we got a scam going around, folks. So we'll tell you a little bit about that, and you don't need to believe them. Well, basically. the alert came from our local paper, mm -hmm. Sandy Donson. Uh, mm -hmm. She's got good advice. <laughs> At mm -hmm. the tail end of this article, she says, Keep in mind, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is well, too that. good to be true. That's the uh, truth. What, yeah. What people are wanting, if, if you want money, you should not have to send money to get your money. Exactly. And exactly. you should not have to give them your bank account. Never. No. If, if Never. it's your money, let them send it to you. That's right. But the scam was reported from uh, someone in Dublin. And that's where, yeah, that's where the return address was, I believe. That's and, Ireland. And one of the readers of the local paper sent this mm -hmm. in, and she said someone had won a prize of two million six hundred thousand oh, wow. dollars. Well, that would get anyone's attention. Of course, of course. I would if if I won six dollars, get my attention. <laughs> but she had to uh, contact a claims agent. And this okay. claims agent was going to direct her how to handle the winning of the two million six hundred thousand okay. dollars. She had to purchase insurance before she could get the prize money. Okay, that that's very uh, strange. That's a red flag. She would several red uh, flags. Well, there's just several, one after another. Mm -hmm. And she could not act on any any uh, any notice until she got a word from that agent that she was to hire. Oh yeah. And this then uh, she could not let anybody know that she'd won the money. <laughs> That's First thing you do, you you'll call everybody and say uh, you'll put an ad yeah, in the paper and say yeah. I want it. If I won a big prize like that, I couldn't keep that a secret. I but mean, anyway, you tell everybody. The the letter wound up in <clears throat> the, the Bledsonian uh, Banner's uh, staff's hands, mm. and they're the ones that uh, decided to publish it. Well, uh, it needed to be. Uh, it's she, This person is not the only one that's went through this, so uh, they're just warning people about it, basically. I, I Don't think, believe these people. I think one reason that scams succeed so handily we're greedy. Yeah, yeah. We like the idea of getting something for nothing. You dang right. <laughs> All right. Albertology. Albertology. Herbert Kane died. I read about it in the paper yesterday. He was the presidential candidate, one of the presidential candidates, when we had a full field of about 20 men running. Mm -hmm. But... He was only 74 years of age, and he succumbed to the coronavirus disease. Who is it again, Lord? Herbert Kane. He was a candidate for uh, vice, for president. 
Was he? And he became a Trump supporter after okay. he dropped out. Herbert Kane. Herbert Kane. Good looking man. For some smart reason I keep man. Placing. Smart man. Okay. okay, I read in the paper today that Sticky Fingers Restaurant shut down six of their facilities. Really? Uh, the virus. Oh, okay. Uh, they have three restaurants left. One is downtown Chattanooga, and two of them are in South Carolina. Okay. Sticky Fingers, I believe they had their own barbecue sauce. I believe so. I think so. Uh, I've enjoyed eating there. It's a Yeah, they have good food. Good food. Mm -hmm. Dunkin' Donuts will close 800 stores no. in the wake of the virus. Oh, wow. That sounds drastic, 800 stores, sure but does. that's just 8% of their total okay. store occupants. Okay, well, that, that makes 8%. it sound a lot better then. McDonald's is going to close 200 stores due to the You're virus. You're kidding. Wow. Uh, it's. Well, I hope we're not. Long. I don't. I don't think we're through with the full ramifications of what the virus will do. Never will be until the media stops talking about twenty four seven. Well, <laughs> the media has a lot I to talk about. I did not know this. No way. Regis, Regis Philbin, Philbin died. He's eighty eight years old. When did he die? When did he? I did not know he died. I read this about two days ago. I think. Uh, I cannot believe that. Ray, Regis was 88 years of age. Mm -hmm. I remember him most of all for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh, he was fixing to turn 89, it said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he also was known for the morning show. He had uh, Kathy Lee. Uh, yeah, Gifford. Regis and Kathy Lee. And yeah. then he went. Uh, then it was Regis and Kelly. Uh, th that was the second one. Now it's Kelly and. Uh, I think Ryan Seacrest, but yeah, that show, yeah, that show so. lives on. But anyway, uh, he was a very popular character oh, on yeah. television. Yeah, he's uh, a funny guy. Philbin logged more than 15,000 hours on the air. He got the recognition of being the owner of the Guinness World Book of Records, the most broadcast hours by a TV personality. Really? Uh, Hugh Downs had the previous record, and, and so Regis, Regis beat awesome. his record. Wow. Uh, one one thing that he would always say on the millionaire is mm -hmm. that your final question? Yeah, <laughs> is that your final answer? Okay, yeah, he sure would. Then he he was the one that came out with a shirt and tie to match. Yeah, and He's he the one that he done. put out a line. Of his oh. sh shirts and ties that were I didn't matched. know that. Uh, so he died of natural causes, because I was about to say I'd not heard that he had been sick. No, or no. But here's his name Regis Francis Xavier Philbin. Okay. <laughs> and he grew up in the Bronx in New York, and okay. he was named for the Roman Catholic boys' school that his dad attended. No, That's why he got the oh. the name Francis Xavier. Okay. okay. There was a Xavier. I was wondering about that. Xavier, Ohio. I remember when I worked in Dayton, Ohio, there was a little town nearby Xavier. Well, there's a university, Xavier University. Okay, they had a good basketball there. team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The the aquarium in Chattanooga. Mm hmm. The Tennessee Aquarium. The Tennessee Aquarium. Came in fifth on the top ten list of aquariums. Uh, dang, that, that's really. They opened in 1992. Man. Yeah. And they have attracted more than 25 million people to Chattanooga from all over the world. Wow. Since 92. Yeah, that's. That's, that's 28 years, but yeah. 25 million people. That's a lot. Here's the ten top best aquariums. Wonders of Wildlife in Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. I've been there. Oh, we've been to that one, too. Yeah. So that's Audubon, good. It's number two. Yeah. Audubon Aquarium of the Americas. That's in New, New Orleans. Orleans. Texas State Aquarium is in Corpus Christi. Okay. And, folks, if you're wondering, yes, it is storming <laughs> like crazy outside. <laughs> the Tennessee Aquarium, of course, is number five in Chattanooga. 
Have you been to this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. I've been there. I haven't been to that one. Adventure Aquarium in Camden, New Jersey. Okay. The Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut. I've been to Mystic, Connecticut, but I didn't really? see the aquarium. Yeah. Newport Aquarium in Newport, Kentucky. Okay. And the Odyssey Aquarium in Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, <clears throat> two Tennessee ones on there. Got two out of the top ten. I, I like that. Can't beat that, can you? Also, I've been to both those aquariums many, many times. They're both good. I've been to the one in Knoxville, too. Really? Yeah. Okay, here's a list of the best states okay. for their public school systems. Okay, let's hear that. Massachusetts is number one. Massachusetts. Connecticut is number two. Okay. New Jersey is number three. Do you realize how the location of those two They're states? They're all close together. Virginia is number four. Finally, a uh, southern state. Vermont is number well, five. Back to New England again. Uh, <laughs> but Apparently, now, New England schools do really well. Here's the five worst schools. Okay. <laughs> New are, Mexico. Wow. Louisiana. Mm. Arizona. Alaska. Alaska. And Oklahoma. Wow. Alabama came in at number eight in the worst category. Yeah. Tennessee and Georgia came in 16th and 17th. Oh. I'm glad we were not in the top five yeah. worst ones. We're not even in the top I'm, ten. That's good. But I'm sad. I'm sad we were not in the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we made the good ones. That's true. Carl Rayner died. Okay, he sounds familiar. Uh, He's the one on? that originated the Dick Van Dyke show. Oh, really? And he wrote it. He wrote the show oh, for so. himself. Oh. He was to be the star, but the producers and everybody and they wanted Dick Van Dyke to be the star. Oh. And so Carl Runner, he Didn't stepped aside. That. He stepped aside and let, and nobody could do it like Dick Van Dyke. That Man. right? Well, I'm sure he got a. But well, of money though, if he oh, created Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. I'm sure he did. <laughs> You're always doing well if he created a show. Yeah. Okay, starting today, tonight. Uh huh. The Muppets are back. The Muppets are back. Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy. Yeah. The whole kit and caboodle. They're in Muppets now. That's the new show. Uh huh. There's going to be six episodes that will be aired. But well, that's good. Uh, Glad to see you them know, back. I read this today. Some of the best movies being shown right now, being attended right now, mm. are old, old ones. Yep. Yep. What about that? Because the new ones... they were really good. They're holding back on the new ones, but some of the old ones, like Jaws, mm -hmm. is still being popular. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I just couldn't believe that. I know. that Some of them just stay popular. Okay, no, I've got forever, a I've like. got a few readers digest, and then I've got some of mine. Your jokes, all right. Now you tell us if it's a joke or if it's something else. Well, you not have many. To let us know. The readers digest is mostly it's not really funny. Then why are we reading it? But <laughs> <laughs> it was 1943. Okay. The height of World War Two. It ended right. in 45. Right. Reader's Digest ran these examples of military slang to help us understand Johnny's new lingo when Johnny came marching home. Oh. When I graduated, Billy, <laughs> for class night, I sang when Johnny comes marching home. Did you did a solo? I sang a solo. Oh, don't, wow! Don't ask me why they asked me to, but anyway, I would like to ask them. That. But here's the lingo <laughs> that the Reader's Digest printed back in the forties. Okay. Armored cow meant canned milk. <laughs> okay. A china clipper meant a dishwasher. <laughs> Roll up your flaps meant <laughs> sidearms. <laughs> Can you believe stuff like that? No. <laughs> now these are kind of funny though. These are facts and they're true. Biologist James Watson once put his Nobel Prize up for auction because of financial difficulties. Wow. 
it brought four point seven billion dollars. Whoa. The person that bought Dang. it listen. Gosh. The person that bought it gave it back to him. Gave it four point seven billion dollars. He thought that man should not have to do with that his Nobel Prize. He bought it and gave it oh, to him. Okay, he, that blew my mind. That's a case of people having uh, more money than they do sense. Uh, you, you've heard of Steven Spielberg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg has spent more than one point three million dollars buying back old Oscars at <laughs> auction. Including no Betty way. Davis's statuette for really? when she played Jessie Bell, and then he donates those Oscars to the uh, Arts and Sciences Museum. Okay, that that I like that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. a question. A word I know that six letters contains. Subtract the last, and only twelve remain. No. What is the word? Oh my gosh. The word is dozens. <laughs> oh. And you take away the S and you've got 12 left. Ooh, okay. Listen to okay. this. This really happened. True story here, folks. True I was story. grocery shopping with my three year old. Okay. And he really wanted some gummy treats. I explained to my son that we couldn't afford it because daddy lost his job. A man came up and said, here, you drop this, and handed her a $50 bill. Wow. And that's a true story. True story. I like that. I like that. I was eight years old and at a public pool. <laughs> this is a young girl. Okay. When some boys began making fun of me for being so fat. Mm. As I walked away crying... That's this sad. gorgeous college-age woman sprung to my defense and got those boys kicked out of the pool. Mm -hmm. Then she came to right. came to ask me to hang out with her and her friends. <laughs> yeah, and they were so sweet. They shared their tab drink. They didn't <laughs> want me to drink a coke, <laughs> and they shared their trashy magazines, <laughs> and they painted her fingernails. <laughs> and best of all, they told her she was pretty. That, that, that's what she needed to hear. That, that's what made her day. This is a true story. A repeat customer at Best Buy found out we both had Crohn's disease. Patricia's son, Alan, had Crohn's. He has Crohn's? I didn't know that. He knew I'd been very sick mm -hmm. and that my health care hadn't kicked in yet, didn't have insurance, mm -hmm. and that I didn't have a regular doctor. So he sent me to his doctor, gave me $300 to pay for the doctor's visit and the hey. medicine that I would need. You can't beat that. Isn't that something? That, yeah. Uh, there I'm are nice people, there are nice people in this world. Yeah, there is. There is. During a stint in Vietnam, this again is a true story, <laughs> I took my R&R &R in Taipei, Taiwan. After a night on the town, I grabbed a cab back to my hotel. Okay. But because of the language barrier, I could not explain where that was. But then I remembered I had picked up a pack of matches <laughs> with the name and address of the hotel on it. There you go. So I showed it to the driver and pointed to the match <laughs> cover. A few minutes later, we arrived at my destination, but it was the Taipei Match Factory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's now listen, good. you'll that's appreciate. A true story. You'll appreciate this one. <laughs> a medic was assigned. My stepfather, he was a medic, and he was assigned to a cubicle in the medical tent, where okay. the recruits came through. Okay. At one point, a nervous young man stopped in the entry of the cubicle and Pop pointed to a container several <laughs> feet away and he said, just pee in that bottle. Whoa. And the boy said, from here? <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe you could do that. No. Unless there's something right, else. I think it's time to still Yeah, something. nothing against those, but uh, none of them were funny at You're all. You're not going to tell me those are from Emily, are you? Uh, thank you, Miss Emily. Thank you, Miss <laughs> Emily. 
Okay, you know you're getting old when all the names in your bla- in your little black book are doctors. Yeah. <laughs> I go to I go to more doctors here lately than Carter's got little liver pills. <laughs> old age is when you know all the answers but nobody asks you the questions. Ooh, I like that one too. <laughs> An old maid knows all the answers but she's never asked the question. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> All right. The pen is mightier than the sword. I learned that in school. Yeah, I do too. That's not funny, though, at all. Abraham Lincoln said this, The Lord prefers common-looking people. Mm. That's the reason he made so many of them. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh, I get Abraham. Abraham Lincoln was a smart man. Tell us a couple of uh, jokes, like l- real jokes. All right. Mao Tse-sung, you ever heard of him? Who? Communist leader, Mao Tse-sung. No. He what said, about him? politics is war without bloodshed, and war is politics with blood. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the, the truth. The great pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. That's not funny, is it? No, none of these have been funny. But, I mean, they're good advice, but uh, they're not funny at all. Okay. This is the sorriest joke telling you've ever done, Papa. Congress is so strange. <laughs> Congress is so strange. I agree a man with gets that. Up, a man gets up to speak and says nothing. <laughs> Nobody listens and everybody disagrees. <laughs> now that... That's the truth. Dwight Eisenhower said this. Okay. What counts is not necessarily the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Well, I like that too, and that's good advice, but that was not funny either. Okay. Are we telling jokes, or are we just giving out advice today? Whatever comes out, bit it comes out. It's supposed to be jokes right now. I can't help it. (laughs) Winston Churchill said this, Politics is more dangerous than war, for in war you are only killed once. Ooh. Burn. I like that. Wasn't funny, but I like it. Before pollution, people used to get airsick only on airplanes. Hmm. I think that was a joke. It was just a really bad one. (laughs) This is funny here. Like, look here. Get a thunderstorm warning ro- rolling through. It's over now. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, the storm is over. Yeah. I know he didn't say Oregon, did he? No. Wow, it's a quarter size hail. Well. Well, radio listeners, uh, maybe there might be some more rain on the way. I don't know. Spring City. Heard that part. And now it'll just keep uh, rolling and rolling and rolling through. You know, this happened just uh, about three or four weeks ago, too, didn't it? It's not been that long. And you never know it. when it's going to happen, and you can't make it stop. <laughs> the bad part is, folks, that this is funnier than any of the jokes Papa told today. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Well, when this guy shuts up about warning us about these storms, we'll have you tell a joke. You have a joke you can tell. There's got to be a joke in there somewhere. Right. Oh. It, you, you're slacking on jokes today. You even got your new book and everything. Okay, that so radio listeners, you all got to hear that. Um, 
They're just basically warning us about our surrounding counties, though, is what it sounded yeah. like to me. We had a... It just to come a, a good rain here. We had a good rain. Okay. Uh, this was said by uh, Abraham Lincoln. No, I don't want to tell that one. Will Rogers. Okay. More men have been elected between sundown and sunup than ever were elected between sunup and sundown. I'd say so. Things go on. Uh, <coughs> you dang right they do. Under the table, behind the, behind the scenes. <laughs> they sure do. Okay. <laughs> this isn't the joke book, is it? Well, old postmen, <laughs> old postmen never die. They just lose their zip. Oh, okay. I, I, I like that. At least that's a joke. I, I can live with that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, One more, and I will put you out of your misery for today. <laughs> the, poor, the poor have to work so hard making a living, they have mm -hmm. a time to get rich. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's their heart. I know. A practical nurse is one who marries a rich patient. There you go. Okay. <laughs> we'll close on that. We'll end it on that one. And I will make him look for his new book that you just got the other day that actually had jokes in it. we, we got to uh, find that. I like these. Well, I like, they're not jokes, but yeah. Uh, they're good advice. They're good advice. Abraham Lincoln said, <laughs> when I hear a man preach... Mm -hmm. I like to see him act as if he were fighting bees. <laughs> <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said that? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe good old Abe had a sense of humor then after all. Sounds like he did, didn't it? But we're going in on that, folks. On that. We're in right. on that. All right, all right. That's it for Albertology. Are you good on Albertology today, Pop Pop? Good show today. Thanks, everybody, for listening to us on WUAT Radio. And for watching us here on Channel 18 Valley TV and on YouTube. We'll see you folks next time for another edition of the Albert and Billy Show. Bye, folks. So long, folks. Brought to you by Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative, your full-service telecommunications provider right here in the Sequatchie Valley.